Let's take a closer look at consumption. Members of households spend on the market for goods and services. But where do they get the income from? Well, if we return to our circular flow, we have households and firms. And we know households are the owners of the factors of production, which they sell to firms and in return they get an income. So there's a flow of income from firms to households. And what do we do as members of households? Yes, we spend. We spend on the production of, uh, of firms. So our ability to spend, our ability to consume, depend on income. So we can also say it's a function of income. And if income goes up, if we earn more, then we spend more. And if income reduces, then we will spend less. So we can say consumption is a positive function of income. If income goes up, consumption will go up. And the opposite is also true. But if we look close, more closely at this relationship between consumption and income, the next question that we need to ask, do we spend all our additional income? Now remember, I'm not asking whether you spend all your income, but we as members of households. On average, we don't. We spend a certain proportion of income. Say our income increased with, with one rand. There's an increase of one rand. Then we've spent, say, 80 cent. And the other 20 cent? That, we're going to save that. So if income increased with one rand, we spent 80 and in our example, we save 20 cent. This portion of additional income that we spend, we refer to as the marginal propensity to consume. You remember the concept marginal. What happens to output if you add one more labor, marginal output? What happens to cost if we produce one more product, marginal cost. Now, what happens to consumption when income increased by one rand? The marginal propensity to consume. And the partner of marginal propensity to consume is the marginal propensity to save. But we'll come back later to the marginal propensity to save. Let's concentrate on consumption for a moment. Part of our additional income is spent, the marginal propensity to consume. The fact that we spend, the fact that we consume, is a result of additional income. So we can summarize all what we've written so far and say consumption is a function of income. We spend only a certain proportion, and that proportion is given by the mass of propensity to consume. We use the symbol small c for the mass of propensity to consume. This part of our consumption that depend on income is also referred to as induced consumption. Induced consumption. So an increase in income induces, set in motion, leads to more spending. Induced consumption. But we don't, our spending does not only depend on income. Sometimes we spend, and that spending is, is, is not related to income. To give an example, you don't, from your income, just go and buy a car. You need to save. You put money away. And then on one day, if you have enough money, you take out the funds from your savings account, and now you're going to spend it. So there's a portion of, of consumption not related to income. We refer to it as autonomous spending. And we show it separately. So there's not only a flow of induced consumption to firms, but also a flow of autonomous consumption. C bar. To show that's not related to income. So if we can summarize all of this, we say consumption consists of an autonomous part, not related to income, plus an induced part, that part 
that depend on income.